Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Board Game Brunch, my monthly live Q&A right here on the Dice Tower. I am Crystal Pisano, in case you don't know who I am, and I host this Q&A every month um, where I just get to sit and hang out with you all, which is honestly one of my favorite things to do. Uh, so, hello! <laughs> uh, I know that my background is kind of weird looking, um, so... Over the past like month or two, I've been rearranging my office, um, and so my this camera that you all are seeing me from used to face that direction and that cool background that's over there that I bought on Amazon forever ago. So it is still taped up on that wall. Then over there is a green screen. Um, the reason for that being, um, I actually on my Twitch channel, um, I was streaming some Beat Saber yesterday, and I wanted to try and make it so people who were watching me play Beat Saber then could see my Beat Saber screen in front of me, so it looked like when I was slashing at the blocks, you'd actually be able to see it. It didn't work out perfectly, um, but it did kind of work. But regardless, I was like, do I want to take the green screen back down? Uh, no, because it is a bunch of green poster board and it is falling apart. So now that it's up on the wall, I'm going to leave it there temporarily. Um, yeah, so um, if you guys don't know what Beat Saber is, it is a very, very, very cool game uh, uh, that's in VR. So it uses my Oculus Rift. Got the headset here. Um, and it is super fun. It's like a rhythm game, like Dance Dance Revolution or Guitar Hero, but instead of playing a guitar or dancing, you are slashing at colored bricks with lightsabers, and it is really super fun. Um, so yeah, uh, my voice is a little bit weird because it's, I mean, 9.30 isn't early, but it feels early to me on Sundays. I don't know. Um, if you all have any questions for me, feel free to drop them in the chat. Until I have a few questions built up, uh, I'm just gonna ramble for a bit. Uh, yesterday was a very good mail day for me, at least board game wise, because I got a bunch of stuff in the mail, which of course I've now set to- Oh gosh, oh wow, that was my phone, it's fine, everything's fine. I'm so sorry if that was ridiculously loud. That just fell and hit my computer tower, so that was why it was really loud. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so let's see. Okay, so Restoration Games um, sent me some stuff. So they sent me um, one of the expansions for Downforce. I've played Downforce before, um, but I haven't tried the expansion, so I'm really excited to try that. I didn't bring that one upstairs. They also sent me <gasps> Unmatched, so I'm really, really excited to try this one out. Um, I, everyone is raving about Unmatched, and I haven't played it yet. So they sent me Medusa, King Arthur, Alice, and Sinbad the base box there, and then the Robin Hood and Bigfoot expansion. If you all have played Unmatched, please tell me about it in the chat, because I know that it's like a two-player dueling game, or you can play it four-player, I guess, but like I think it's intended to be mostly two-player. Um, and I don't know, all I've heard is good stuff, so I'm really excited to try this one out. Let's see here. And Sterling is barking downstairs. I don't know if you all can hear that or not. Um, then, so I already, I, I backed Fireball Island on Kickstarter, you know, back whenever that happened. Um, but I, uh, they also sent me the Spider Springs expansion for Fireball Island. Oh my gosh, all the dogs are barking right now. I don't understand what's happening. So that's fun. Uh, I'm so excited to try out this expansion. Y'all can't even, I uh, like... I hate spiders in real life, but spiders in Fireball Island seems like a really good idea, and I'm very excited about it. So this one, and it's funny because I just played Fireball Island um, like a hand, like maybe two or three weeks ago, or maybe a little longer than that. But like recently, uh, I got Fireball Island back to the table, and it was super fun. And now I'm like, yeah, I want to play it again because that's the thing. I think a lot of people thought Fireball Island was going to be just for kids or kind of just a gimmick, and it most certainly isn't. It's really fun, and there is like a good amount of strategy in it. So I really enjoy playing it with just adults. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't play it with kids. I just haven't played it with kids. Uh, then the other thing that came in the mail that I'm so excited about, this one's not from Restoration. Look what I got. Aftermath. This is the new storybook game from Plaid Hat Games, Jerry Hawthorne. Um, here, let me turn it around so y'all can see the back. Oof. Um, 
So you are, let's see if I can read. The calamity took the humans. Now the creatures who lived in the shadows of humanity are taking center stage, forced to survive by building the world anew from the ruins of the old. Um, yeah, so it's an adventure book series where you play different scenarios in a book that flip the pages flip over and that's the different scenes that you're in. And you're playing con cute animals, kind of like in Mice and Mystics, but they're not all just mice. Like I know there's a mouse and a guinea pig and I think there's a vole. Uh, I'm not certain what a vole is. I've heard of it um, and I know it's a small rodent-like creature. I'm so excited about this. I got to demo this at PAX Unplugged and fell in love with it immediately. So I'm very excited that I own it now. Um, I don't know how quickly I'm gonna be able to get this played though, because I wanna play the whole campaign with the same people and I don't know who in my game group is gonna be interested in this one. Uh, I am hoping my friends, uh, my friend Elissa will be potentially interested and have time because she is an elementary school teacher and has the best like reading voice. She's, oh, you guys, if you've watched my live streams on here before, um, she's the one who played Fog of Love with me here on the Dice Tower. Um, and yeah, she's awesome. So, so that was a good mail day for me. Lots of cool stuff in the mail. Um, I'm, I have a couple other things that I can show off, but I'm going to scroll back up and look at the questions because I see everything is scrolling by. Um, yes, Beat Saber is kind of similar to the drumming part in Rock Band. Well, not really, because the drumming part is just drumming. Like, your Beat Saber, you're literally moving all over. Uh, also, Beat Saber now has 360 degree maps where the world fully spins while you're doing stuff. I haven't played any of those yet, but it's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Oh, Kabuki Kid, that is very true. Uh, your coworker says it is partly a workout. Beat Saber can definitely be a workout. Um, it is definitely not the most intense workout, but if you play for a while, like I get, yeah, very, very hot and tired after playing for a while. Um, and what's interesting is I actually found recently there are some people who have down or have created maps. So I all all of the maps that I play usually are modded maps. Original Beat Saber only comes with like a set amount of songs and they're mostly not licensed music uh, or not like popular music. Um, it's stuff that Beat Saber has had created for the game. Um, but there's a very large community of people who create modded maps, kind of like any game. Um, so I play all of those and someone created a map for Little Shop of Horrors, the musical. It's the entire musical soundtrack all in a single map. So the, the track on Beat Saber is like 39 or 40 minutes long. I don't think, it technically doesn't have every single song. Like they didn't do the reprise of Somewhere That's Green. They did just the first one. Um, but I think every other song is in there, including uh, Don't Feed the Plants, which isn't in the movie version because they cut it. Um, and there's a longer version of um, one of the songs. And I can't remember which one it was now. Uh, the one where Seymour is like getting famous and trying to decide whether he's going to sign the contracts or not. In the movie, it's short. In the full-length version, it's much longer. Um, also, if you all are a fan of musicals and you haven't seen Little Shop of Horrors, the movie version with Rick Moranis, Steve Martin, you should 100% watch it. But <laughs> if you haven't seen it before, be aware of what version of it you're downloading. So here's the story of Little Shop of Horrors. It was a stage musical first and then turned into a movie. And the ending of the movie version that got released in theaters is very different from the ending of the musical. Um, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't happened to see it. Yes, I know it's old, but I don't like to spoil things. But I'll just say they, they filmed the original ending um, and showed it to test audiences and test audiences hated it so they came brought everybody back and filmed a new ending um and then that's what got released in theaters so the one in that got released in theaters originally is shorter and different and then um the yeah the other ending uh is different and it matches what was on, on in the stage musical and again sorry for being vague but i don't want to spoil it but needless to say i like both endings 
even though they're very different. Um, but there's, I, I understand why they changed the one that they released in theaters. Um, <laughs> Hawk School says, how many cream eggs is too many? I don't know the answer to this question. <laughs> I love Cadbury cream eggs. Um, I don't know why we're talking about Easter candy right now, but I'm very excited about it because, well, technically they release them like all year long now as different like holiday things. Like I saw in Halloween, they had scream eggs that were like, instead of a uh, <coughs> yellow yolk, it was like green, which was kind of gross. Um, but I don't know how many is too many, but a uh, fun story about that, a few years ago, <laughs> my dad, as a joke, sent my husband and I a box of 50 Cadbury cream eggs for Easter. And he thought it was a joke. I was very excited. <laughs> no one needs 50, but we put the box in the fridge. Also, if you're not putting your Cadbury cream eggs in the fridge, what are you doing with your life? Because that's the best way to eat them is when they're cold. Um, but we put them in the fridge and they lasted for I don't even know how long, a very long time. And I really like those things, but yeah, though you can't eat, I don't ever eat more than one at a time, but like, I still feel like we got through them in a few months. It wasn't too bad. Uh, Kabuki Kid says, I know Star Wars isn't entirely your thing, but have you seen the final movie? How about The Mandalorian? Okay, wait, hold on. When have I said Star Wars isn't my thing? Have I said that? I haven't said that, have I? I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars a lot. Yes, I am a Star Trek gal. Star Trek is my first love, but I am not one of those people that's like, Star Trek, not Star Wars. Uh, please give me all of the space opera, space adventure, space anything stuff. I love Star Wars. I spent my childhood watching and re-watching the original trilogy over and over and over and over again. Love Star Wars. Please do not think otherwise, because <laughs> I totally do. Uh, I have seen the final movie, and I have seen The Mandalorian in its entirety as well. And I... The only thing to really say here without spoiling anything is that I have enjoyed pretty much everything that Star Wars has ever made. There are flaws in some of the things, and there are things that I wish that they had done differently. Um, but I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen the new movie yet or the show. So I will just say for now that I really, really, really uh, enjoy everything. So flaws and all, um, it's a fun ride. And yeah, um, so I, 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 would, I will talk maybe more in detail about that stuff when we've got some more time passed and I can kind of uh, discuss things a little bit more specifically. Or if, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or wherever, uh, or send me an email, crystal at dicetower.com, uh, and uh, ask me any questions you want, and I'll answer them. Uh, Dutch Yoda says, haven't played Unmatched yet. Oh, Kabuki Kid has played Unmatched, played as Alice, and friend was King Arthur. It was a fun game, very close. Alas, Arthur defeated Alice. I'm really excited um, to try Unmatched. I've heard nothing but good things, so. Uh, ooh, um, in case any of you haven't uh, click the little thumbs up button below the video yet. If you want to do that for me right now, I would really appreciate it. Um, it was funny. There were a bunch of thumbs downs of it yesterday, but then when I checked this morning, it looked like they were gone, which doesn't really make sense. Um, cause that's, it's not like that should have happened here. Let's see. I'm going to look and see if they, I'm looking on my phone. Yeah. There was like, there was a bunch yesterday. Now it says there's only one. I don't know, where would they have gone? How did the thumbs downs go away? That doesn't really make sense. There were at least four when I checked yesterday. Regardless, I don't care, it's still engagement, but I still like the thumbs ups better. So I appreciate when you guys help with the YouTube algorithms. Kabuki Kid, I like spiders. I am that person who saves them and releases them outside. It's weird because I am the type of person who wants to do that. Like, I realize that spiders serve a purpose. Oh gosh, Sterling's barking again. Oh gosh, the dogs are all riled up today. I have my office door closed, but that's not 
helping completely. Uh, yeah, I want to be the person who traps the spider and takes it outside, but that's, that requires being really close to it, and I am really, really scared of spiders. Um, like, really scared of spiders, so I can't generally do that. Um, if I find a spider in our house, or in mostly any bug at all, um, I will... <laughs> <laughs> this is embarrassing to admit. I will take a cup of some kind and I will place it over said bug and uh, leave it there until my husband comes home and can deal with it. When I lived alone, I had to deal with killing bugs on my own, but uh, now I don't have to. So uh, I'm very self-sufficient in many ways, but when it comes to killing bugs or spiders, I'm not good at it. So, and I don't want to kill spiders. I just like well, you've come into my house you're in my territory i gotta yeah uh kabuki kid thinks cadbury cream eggs are nasty too sweet i get that and i think they are very very sweet um oh hawk school says i don't put mine in the fridge i live in a cold country yeah <laughs> i mean if if you keep because yeah if i'd kept cadbury cream eggs here in las vegas through the summertime uh they would have been a little bit soft and melty uh, James Brazil, have you checked out Wavelength? The sound sounded a lot like French toast, which you had talked about. Um, so it's not really, okay, yes, I own Wavelength. I don't actually have my copy in the office here, so I can't show it off, although I maybe could go grab it. Um, let me know in the chat if you all want me to go grab it. It'll take me all of probably 30 seconds to run out and get, um, but I don't like having dead air during my live stream. Um, but I could show you guys the components. It looks pretty cool. Um, have I opened it yet? I don't even know if I've taken the plastic off the box. Maybe that's not a good idea. Um, but yes, wavelength, yeah, it gives you a range and you have to spin a wheel and then pick an item that falls within the range on the spot that the wheel chose and have everybody guess where the little lever is supposed to go between two things. So like if the range, if the two eyed things were hot or cold, and then you spun the wheel and the like the wheel ended up so it was right in the middle of hot and cold you're su supposed to name an item that is right in between hot and cold so like what would you name if you had to name something that's not hot or not cold that's i mean like i don't even something that's very neutral in temperature Like, maybe you would say air, because, like, I feel like air can be both hot and cold, so maybe people would pick in the middle for that. But, yeah, only one person knows where the wheel landed, and everyone else has to figure it out, and then you reveal. The components are pretty cool. Uh, I'll give you all a little preview that I actually might be running a game of Wavelength during Dice Tower tonight this week. So if you all do not know, um, Eric Summer and I host a live show on every other Wednesday called Dice Tower Tonight. Uh, we talk about board games, we play a trivia game with the chat, so you all get to interact with us live, um, and then we talk about a topic and we answer questions there as well. Uh, this week though, uh, I believe this is confirmed, so I I, I, unless something happens, um, we are going to have a very, very special guest with us on the show, uh, and that special guest is Rob Davio. He's going to be joining us for Dice Tower tonight and showing off Return to Dark Tower live. So unless something happens or schedules don't work, um, I believe he is confirmed. So this is the first you all are probably hearing about that, and I'm really excited. So... James Brazil's kind of in the same camp I am. You can be a Trekkie and a Star Wars fan. More, He's more of a Trek fan, um, but he loves both. Yeah, that's where I am as well. Like, I just... It's not that I really even that I love Star Trek. No, I do love Star Trek more. But it has nothing to do with what Star Wars is. Like, my love isn't that I think Star Trek is better than Star Wars. Star Trek just resonates with me more than Star Wars does. Like, it is... It's... I don't know, it's something deeper and more special. Tom asks, did you watch Space 1999? Uh, I did not. I don't know what that is. So somebody will have to put in the chat um, what that is. Because, yeah, is it a movie? TV show? Documentary? Who knows? Let me know. 
Um, Jordan asks, Crystal, are you going to be on the cruise again? Yes, I am. And that is like a month away now. How is that even possible? Uh, the Dice Tower cruise is really, really fun. And I am going to be there. I'm very excited about it. Um, we're doing a whole bunch of really neat stuff on the cruise. I am really excited to annoy Tom by wearing my unicorn onesie again. <laughs> I don't know why he hates the onesies so much, but it's really funny. He doesn't actually hate them, but he just, you know, rolls his eyes when we wear them. Let's see here. People saying what they thought of Star Wars. Oh no, the chat just jumped down to the bottom. Okay. Oh, it says YouTube has been purging accounts recently. Maybe when accounts get purged, their thumbs are affected as well. Maybe, but like the chances of at least three people who actively sought out. Ooh, actually, I wonder, I wonder if they, if like, if certain people go and thumbs down a bunch of videos that haven't like actually happened yet, like mine, a live Q&A that hasn't even existed yet. I wonder if YouTube is recognizing that those people are just clicking thumbs down because like to be haters and maybe they, they're removing those. I don't know. That would be neat. Um, Games of Fire says, how many dogs do you have? I love my dogs. Um, I have three um, and their names are Lana, Sterling, and Maybe. Uh, Lana and Sterling are eight years old and Maybe is seven. Although Maybe acts like a puppy <laughs> all the time for her entire life. She's seven and she still acts like she's a puppy. Everyone thinks she's very young because she's very excitable. Um, I, if I had my office door open, she would maybe come in here and hang on, out on my lap, but I have the office door closed for sound purposes. Um, but yeah, they're on. Um, so Lana is a Bichon, Sterling is a Maltese, and uh, maybe is a Poodle mix. Um, she's mostly Poodle, a little bit Welsh Terrier, um, and then some other breeds that her DNA test weren't able to, wasn't able to identify. But they're all white and fluffy and adorable. Here, I guess I could show you all. The nope, 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 cancel, stop. Uh, the background on my phone shows all three puppos. It's a, not a great photo because it's really hard to get all three of them uh, in a vertical <laughs> picture like that. Uh, they tend to be uh, hard to capture that direction, but I love them. They're the best. Let's see here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. A Kabuki Kid says, I think the biggest problem with the last Star Wars movie is that it should have been five hours long. It was like two movies mashed into one. I could kind of see that. Um, you can buy humane spider catchers. They're like a broom with a handle that scoops them up. A friend of mine swears by hers. Yeah, I, I like the idea of those, but I still, for me and my fear, it's really difficult to even be on the end of a device that has a spider trapped in it, if that makes sense. I mean, I know it doesn't make sense. That's, fears are illogical. Like, this, Especially most spiders aren't going to hurt you anyway. You could put a spider on your hand and you'd theoretically be fine. But my brain doesn't like that. So, um, Friend bought Wavelength last week. Going to play it this coming week. Looks fun. Very cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm actually going to bring... Uh, Breakout Wavelength on New Year's Eve, I'm um, having people over to the house, and so I'm hoping we'll be able to play a big with a big group on New Year's Eve. Um, oh, K K Kabuki Kid asks, is Dice Tower tonight still on Wednesday on the holiday? Yes. So we, um, poor Mandy and Suzanne, we messed up their schedule a little bit, unfortunately. Um, they're doing their stuff. So they were trying to do their new show, Aptastic, on the Wednesday evenings opposite of Dice Tower tonight. So that way every Wednesday evening you would have a live show here on the Dice Tower. Well then in December, um, Eric had a rockapella concert on one of the nights that we were supposed to have a show. So we pushed back a week. Uh, that also made it so we weren't streaming on Christmas day. But currently right now, our show, Dice Tower Tonight, and their show, Aptastic, are happening on the same evening. Um, they're just back to back. It's not like they are at the same time, so it's fine. Um, but yes, Dice Tower Tonight is happening this Wednesday, January 1st. And then it's going to happen again a week later because we're going to try and get back on our normal schedule. So you're going to get Dice Tower Tonight two weeks in a row, which is pretty exciting. So January 1st, Dice Tower Tonight um, at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. 
Then immediately following that is Aptastic with Mandy and Suzanne, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Then a new episode of Dice Tower tonight will happen on January 8th. Um, and that will put us back on our normal schedule. So that way, every single Wednesday evening, you guys will have a live show from the Dice Tower, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so we're excited. Uh, I'm really excited about this week's episode with Rob Davio, because that's going to be great. Um, and I'm really hoping he has the physical uh, tower for Return to Dark Tower that we can show off on stream. Um, because you all, if, if you haven't seen video of it yet, it is just really, really cool. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Dice Tower Tonight game show is great fun, keeps me entertained at work, but it's hard to comment if my manager's on the prowl. Ooh, yeah, don't get yourself in trouble if you're at work <laughs> when it happens. Um, but yeah, we really love doing the interactive games with the chat. It is super fun for us. And we've obviously, if you guys have been watching the show for a while, we try and do different games, mix it up, do uh, cool and interesting stuff. Um, and it's a lot of fun for us to interact with you all. So that is a big mug. It's not that big. It's like, like, see, it's not, it's not that big. Um, but yeah, it's 9.30 in the morning here. So, well, 10 now, but I needed coffee. Uh, my husband very kindly got me a Nespresso machine for Christmas, and I am loving it so much. This morning I made Nespresso coffee and I put some eggnog in it, um, just like the store-bought eggnog in a bottle, whatever, not alcoholic stuff, <laughs> just regular eggnog. And it is very tasty. I'm loving it. Um, uh, okay, Kabuki Kid, you're going to miss the stream on Wednesday. That's okay. We love when you're the hero, but it's okay if you're not. Uh, Ruel Gaviola, friend of mine and the show. Hi, Crystal. What's your favorite Legacy game? I'm almost finished with Clank Legacy, and my group has loved it so far. So I haven't played Clank Legacy yet, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. So I really, really, really want to play that one. So the Legacy... Oh, sorry. Starling is barking again. Oh, doggos. Um... So the legacy games that I have played, uh, I've only played, well, I've played Pandemic Legacy Season 1 all the way through. I've played Pandemic Legacy Season 2 all the way through. And I've played about half of Betrayal Legacy. Um, and the only reason that I've played half of it is because um, we, one of the people in our group um, was having some uh, personal issues and then another member of our group works for UPS. And when the holidays happened here, um, a month or two ago, um, their schedule got really busy. So our, we kind of had to put Betrayal Legacy on pause. Um, I think having only played those three, it's really hard to pick. And I think, so it doesn't matter how many Legacy games I will have played in the future, I think it's going to be really hard for me to pick a favorite because even if the concept of a Legacy game is kind of defined like it's a game that you play multiple times that changes over time either via stickers or ripping things up or incorporating new elements or whatever else um even between pandemic legacy and pa season one and pandemic legacy season two i had very different experiences but not necessarily just because of the game um, because I played Pandemic Legacy Season 1 with three people from my board game group, and I played Pandemic Legacy Season 2 with my husband. So, like, I had a really fun time playing with my friends, and Pandemic Legacy Season 1 was my first Legacy game, so it was a really special experience for that reason, too. But then playing Season 2 with my husband was also really, really neat. Um, playing it two-player was very different. Um, I love both of those games immensely though. It's really hard to pick a favorite between those two. Betrayal Legacy is actually really cool as well. Um, I have always loved Betrayal at House on the Hill, the game that it's based on. Um, it was one of my first games that I played when I got into the hobby back in 2007, um, which holy moly, that's almost 13 years ago now. That is bananas. Um, but yeah, Betrayal Legacy, again, I've only played through half of it, so I can't say for sure, but I'm loving it just as much, I guess. I don't know. I can't compare them. It's too hard. Um, they're all unique experiences. And I think if you have people that you can play 
a legacy game with, of, like people who are willing to, this is something that everybody should try at some point. Um, I, if, you've, if you like Betrayal at House on the Hill, I think Betrayal Legacy is a really good one to start with potentially because it's uh, very approachable. But it's the same thing, Pandemic Legacy, or if, yeah, if you've played Pandemic, Season 1 of Pandemic Legacy is also a really great choice. Um, so Clank Legacy, I definitely want to play. Um, of the other Legacy games, I will probably never play Charterstone. I'll definitely never play Seafall, <laughs> just because I know I won't play that one. Um, what's the one that came out last year from uh, Inca and Marcus Brand? That one I was kind of mildly interested in, but I heard it was a little bit so-so. But I still, like, I love the games that they designed, so I'm really curious about it anyway. Somebody in the chat will drop what it is, probably. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Um, and then what other, there's other legacy games. I've never played Risk Legacy, I'll never play that one, even though that was the first. Um, let's see, Elena Piercing, what's your favorite expansion this year? Oh, that's a really good question. I'm gonna have to go to Board Game Geek um, and look what expansions came out this year. Um, just remember which ones I've played. So we're gonna open up a window here. So let's see, if we go to browse, all board games, we're gonna have to do an advanced search, aren't we, probably? Yeah, let's do advanced search and figure this out. Uh, ooh, how do I just look up expansions? There's a way to search to exclude expansions. Well, you're published. 2019 to 2019. Filter board game category? Ooh, does, is the category, is that, is that, no. I don't think that's gonna. Subdomain? No, well, let's take a look at, which is what came out in 2019 board game wise and see if there's a way for me to filter to expansions. I'm not quite sure. If anyone can figure out how to search for just expansions from 2019 and wants to link it to me. Um, oh, I don't think you're gonna, I don't know, you won't be able to drop a link in the chat though. Um, well, I mean, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of what came out this year specifically. The Wingspan expansion came out this year and I love that. Um, I'm scroll. Oh, oh, if I sort by. Oh, no, this is board game rank. Okay. I don't know how many expansions I played this year. I'm looking. Scrolling through the f like first page of stuff from 2019. It's mostly just games, not expansions. Oh, I'm curious about, I didn't play this one, but I'm curious about the expansion for Inish that came out, Seasons of Inish. Um, I'm curious about that. I own Inish and haven't played it in a long time, um, but I would really like to try the expansion. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe I didn't play a lot of expansions this year. I'm not sure. I could look in my Board Game Geek uh, plays list, but... Um, I'm gonna skip past that one for now. I'm sorry, Elena. I don't know what my favorite expansion was. Maybe I'll say the Wingspan expansion just because it's easy, <laughs> but there were probably other things. Uh, Hawk Skull says, Tom hates onesies because they're really hard to find in our size. Tom owns a onesie. He already has one, so he has no excuse. Uh, any memories about Rene Aubergeois? Oh gosh, I can't pronounce his last name. Odo, who died on December 8th. Um, so I never got to meet Rene personally. Um, I did get to hear him speak uh, at the Star Trek convention here in Las Vegas. Um, I was very, very sad when he died um, this month. Um, we lost two of the Deep Space Nine actor, two of the like most prominent Deep Space Nine actors this year, because um, Aaron Eisenberg also passed away uh, unexpectedly. Uh, and he was young, um, or much younger, um, and Renee was a little bit older, but... Um, Hearing him, like both of those 
people were very, very well-spoken, kind, really great individuals. And um, anytime I got to see them at the Star Trek convention, it was delightful. Um, and everyone always spoke so highly of Renee um, and how talented he was um, specifically. And yeah, getting to hear him speak, especially, so they did, um, not this not this year, but last year, um, they did the 25th anniversary for Deep Space Nine. Um, and they had almost the entire cast back. Um, Avery Brooks doesn't do conventions anymore, but I think everyone else in the main cast was there. Um, and getting to see all of them together again was really just delightful. Um, and I, I think it's one of the things about getting older that you start to lose um, the things that you love. And that includes actors from TV shows and movies that you love. So um, yeah, I don't, I didn't get to meet Renee, unfortunately. I would have loved to have gotten to meet him and I didn't get to do a photo op with him either. Um, but he was, he was really, really kind from what I've heard from the people who have met him. Um, oh, everybody said the dogs are really cute. That's from earlier when I showed the photo. Um, let's see here. Oh, we got a boosted comment from Otter. Hi, Otter. Um, happy holidays. Did you try paranormal detectives? I have not tried paranormal detectives. Um, I would like to. I mean, like every game. It's funny. There are very few games that I hear about and I'm like, I definitely don't want to play that. <laughs> Most games, I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, let's try that out. And I don't get to play all of them, obviously. But if you have played Paranormal Detectives, I would love to hear your thoughts. So feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and I'll uh, share them with everybody else as well. All right, I'm going to scroll back up. Because I missed some stuff here. Um, ooh, wasp catcher. Yeah, don't, oh, don't tell me about wasps. I, that's, I'm worse for me than spiders. Uh, anything that stings, I'm terrified of. Um, James asks, what are top New Year's Eve games? Plan to bring just one and Telestrations and Detective Club to the New Year's Eve party. I think all three of those are awesome choices. Detective Club has flown under a lot of people's radars, and I keep yelling about it because Detective Club is so much fun. Um, so here's the thing. A lot of people that I know and that I've heard online say that they don't like games where you have to lie or like that there's a single person that's the traitor. Traitor is kind of not what I mean, but like this is a, it's a social deduction game where it makes it easy for the person who has to lie to lie or it makes it easier than most of these games do. So like even something like, um, Oh gosh, what's another good example? Like Deception, Murder in Hong Kong from Gray Fox Games, I think is very approachable, but it can be difficult for people. If you're the murderer and you have to try and point suspicion to other people and try and keep it off of yourself, I think that can be a little bit stressful for some people. I think that one's not too bad, but Detective Club is even easier. So what happens in Detective Club, I've explained this before, but I'll explain it briefly again. Um, one person writes down a word on um, these little cards and they hand out the cards to everybody with the same word all written on them, except one person doesn't get the word. So everybody knows what the word is except for one person. So let's say the word is banana. And everybody knows the word is banana, except for Tom. Tom didn't got a card that is blank. He doesn't have anything on it. Uh, all of the players have a hand of cards and they kind of look like the cards from Dixit um, or Mysterium where they're like big tarot sized cards with really ethereal, pretty random artwork on them. You have a hand of cards and you were already dealt those. So now you know the words banana. So now everybody goes around in turn order and plays a single card face, down, or face up on the table from their hand. Um, and they don't say anything about it, they just play it. So one at a time, everybody lays down one card and then you go back around and everybody lays down a second card. For the people who know that the word is banana, they're trying to play cards that they think somehow relate to the word banana. But for the person who doesn't have that word, they don't know what the word is. So they're just looking at the cards everybody else is playing and kind of guessing. So they're like, oh, well, that person played a card with balloons on it. So maybe it's something colorful. So they're going to kind of guess at random and they're just going to play two cards out randomly. Then after everyone has laid two cards out in front of themselves, the word gets revealed. 
banana. Now everybody knows the word was banana, including the person who did not know the word before. Then you go around in turn order and you explain why you played the two cards that you played based on the word banana. So for the person who has to lie, they now have complete information. There's nothing that's hidden from them. They, all they have to do is justify the choices that they made. And so like, let's say one of the cards you played happens to have something yellow on it. Then you can be like, oh, well, the word was banana and clearly I played this card with a computer screen on it because there's something yellow on the computer screen. Um, and what's nice is since the cards have really random and weird artwork on them, just like in Dixit, sometimes you don't have the perfect card. So even if you know the word is banana, some of the reasons you play a card might be kind of tenuous at best. Um, so it makes other people look suspicious. So then obviously everybody has to guess who they think was the person that didn't have the card. Um, points get divvied up. It is so fun. Tell your friends. If you, if people say, I don't like social deduction games, or you have somebody in your group who doesn't want to play most social deduction games, I think this one is one that you should try, truly. Um, it came out in 2018, I want to say. And it just, yeah, like not enough people are talking about it. I really, really like it. Um, oh, <laughs> Kabuki Kid, hate to imagine what you think a big mug is. What? This is like, I mean, it's a little, this is not that big. I'm just, it wasn't completely full either, in case that matters. Like, it wasn't filled to the brim when I filled it up, but, you know, it's fine. Um, let's see here. Kabuki Kid says, I think I preferred Pandemic Legacy Season 2 seemed more challenging. I guess that's kind of true. Between Season 1 and Season 2, they felt very different in some ways and very similar in others. Um, but yeah, having played one with four players and one with two players, it's really hard for me to compare the experiences. I think I actually did better at Season 2 than Season 1. Um, so... I have those stats somewhere. I don't know where exactly. Um, those sound like three really good choices. Just one is on my to buy list. Yeah, if you don't own just one yet and you play games with like a medium-ish group of people, obviously up to seven technically is what that game can accommodate. Uh, just one should definitely be in your game collection. It is the one of the best games that came out this year. Um, and I love it so much. I own two copies. So, uh, Trevin says playing Clank Legacy right now, checking in here on a break. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, tell your group that I said hi, even if they don't have any idea who I am. <laughs> Say, tell them Crystal says hi and good luck and don't let the dragon get you. I'm assuming the dragon is still there in Clank Legacy. <laughs> Um, Kabuki Kid asks, have you watched any other things on Disney Plus? Um, yeah, so last month I talked about um, Disney Plus, how I watched Tron and Tron Legacy, um, and I'd started The Mandalorian, and now I finished The Mandalorian. Um, other stuff that I've watched on Disney Plus, um, I started watching Encore, the new show with Kristen Bell, um, because I love her. Um, so if you haven't heard of that one, it is, what they do is they take um, high school musicals, like, a, well, the cast of a high school musical and bring them all back together, like, when they're adults. So let's say, so like, when I was in high school, I was in four different musicals. So it would be like, now, I'm 35, they would take the cast of, like, Oklahoma that I was in, oh no, Oklahoma was college, uh, Fiddler on the Roof from high school, they would bring everybody back together that was in this musical together in high school and they give them like a week to restage that same musical. Um, and some of the people can sing and some of them cannot and it is really amusing. Um, and it's neat because a lot of these people, you know, don't talk to each other anymore. Like most people, you know, you don't talk to everybody you went to high school with. Um, and yeah, it seems really, really cool. And I'm I'm kind of weirdly like, I wish that they would do it with one of the musicals I was in, but I wasn't in any lead roles. So even if they did do it for my high school, I wouldn't be one of the ones that would get pulled back in because I was in the chorus. Uh, a fun fact, I can sing, dance, and act, but only 
okay in all three of those areas. So I am a perfect person for the chorus. Uh, I am not a leading role kind of gal uh, in that regard, just because I don't have the talent. But that's not, I'm not criticizing myself. I'm just saying it's okay to be okay at those things. Um, but yeah, the musicals I was in in high school, uh, let's see, my freshman year, we did Into the Woods, which was really fun. My sophomore year was either Anything Goes or Guys and Dolls. Junior year was the other of the two. I don't remember which was which. Guys and Dolls and Anything Goes. And then, yeah, senior year was Fiddler on the Roof. Um, and then I was in Oklahoma in college. Not the state, the musical. <laughs> Although I have been to the state of Oklahoma and it's lovely. Uh, the best pancakes I've ever eaten in my entire life, no joke, were in a diner in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't, uh, I could look up the name of the cafe, but it was hands down like life changing pancakes. Just so good. Um, if you live in Tulsa or near Tulsa, you should go eat pancakes at this place because, whew, so good. Um, Games of Fire says the only legacy game I've played so far is Charterstone. I've heard good things about Charterstone. I just don't think it's probably my style of legacy game, but, um, Kabuki Kid says wasn't in love with Charterstone. It was fine, but if it wasn't a legacy game, I don't see myself playing it as many times as we did. Honestly, I think that's the case for me for most legacy games. I played, so, uh, Pandemic Legacy S Season 1 came out in 2015, um, and my group started playing it not super long after it released. We finished that game in January of 2016. So we played through it pretty quickly. Then uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 2 came out in 2017, I believe. Um, and my husband and I played through that one over the course of early 2018. Um, and since... 2015, when Pandemic Legacy Season 1 released, I have not played a single game of regular Pandemic. Not once, since 2015, four years ago, I haven't played Pandemic. And that's not to say that I don't like Pandemic, but I am a person who does not tend to play games lots and lots and lots and lots of times. I like moving on to new games, I like trying out new stuff, so I don't tend to play the same game over and over. And because I played Pandemic Legacy Season 1, um, I, w I don't remember how many games ours took. I want to say we played around 15 or 16 games to finish our campaign there. Um, and I think it was similar for Season 2. Uh, that means in the past four years I've played a pandemic-like game somewhere between 30 and 35 times. Um, and that is more than most games for me. I don't tend to play games that many times. So I just have had no interest in going back to regular pandemic, not because it's bad, but because I played pandemic a lot and I want to play other things. I'm curious if you all experience the same kind of thing. Like I have no ill will toward pandemic, but I just have no compulsion to play it because I've played so much pandemic in the past four years. Um, yeah, like there's just, I just, I don't feel like it. But tell me if you all do the same thing, because I'm curious. Um, Kabuki Kid says, Risk Legacy was maybe the most fun I had with a legacy game. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I just, the idea of Risk is not, I don't like Risk, so I don't think Risk Legacy is going to make it that much more enjoyable for me. Um, Hawkskull says, Nobody mentions Eon's End Legacy. It's the game reviewers love to ignore. Oh, I mean, I don't necessarily, I'm not ignoring it. I just don't know anything about it. Um, I, I mean, I'd be curious to hear more about it if you want to share. Um, but yeah, and legacy. And for the record, so here, I'm gonna I'm not defending myself here. I'm gonna defend other reviewers, so to speak. But um, getting lots of legacy games played is really difficult, especially as a content creator, because you a can't really talk about it in the way that you would want to because of spoilers. And B, the time it takes to play legacy games is intense. Um, so it's really difficult to play a lot of them. And I think um, for some people, you just have to make choices. And I would imagine Aeon's End is maybe just one that doesn't appeal to some people, but I don't know. I don't know anything about it. So I'm happy to hear more. Um, oh, Trevin said they're about to start mission four and he left. So sorry, 
Trevin, I didn't say bye when you left, but I hope you do well. Um, Ruel says, I'm really looking forward to playing Betrayal Legacy. It's on tap, ready to go after we finish Clank. I, having only played half of it, I would highly recommend Betrayal Legacy. Obviously things could go off the rails in the part that I haven't played. Um, but if you like Betrayal at House on the Hill, it, it's, yes, play that. Play Betrayal Legacy, for sure. Um, it's great. Uh, Kabuki Kid says, I'd like to try Aeon's End Legacy. Really liked vanilla Aeon's End. See, and I've never played Aeon's End. So I have no frame of reference here. Um, I mean, I, I know that it exists, but I do not know much about it. Um, Games of Fire says, we never finished Charter Stone. Several people in the group lost interest. Oh, okay. Uh, oh gosh, the chat just jumped down a whole bunch. Here we go. There's not a filter to not have expansions, but not to just have expansions. <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, you can have not expansions, but not just expansions on Board Game Geek. Maybe just search expansion. Yeah, I think it would have to be um, in the name. Oh, good. Some other people were sharing what expansions they liked this year. Oh, Kabuki Kid. That's a good one. The Herb Witches expansion for Quacks. That's probably my favorite of the year. Um, <clears throat> so here's why the Herb Witches expansion for Quacks of Quedlinburg is a great one. Um you can put that expansion into your game and always play with it, no matter who you're playing with. Play, people who have played Quacks before, people who have never played Quacks before. It doesn't make, it, it adds new stuff to the game, but doesn't make it so complex that you can't teach it to new players. And that is my favorite kind of expansion because occasionally, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll buy an expansion but then when I teach the game to new people, I'll be hesitant to put in all of the aspects of the expansion when I'm teaching it. Um, a really good example of this is I love the game Steam Park um, from Yellow Games. And I have the Play Dirty expansion, which has a whole bunch of different modules. Not all of those modules are great for first time players because Steam Park already has a lot going on in the base game. And so I end up not playing the game at all as much because I'm like, oh, well, I have to like figure out which modules to use and which ones do I want to teach them to new players or not. So then the game just doesn't even come off the shelf. I like games where I don't have to make active decisions to be able to play them. I like to be able to just pull the game off the shelf, open it up, teach it, play it, be done with it. And so I think I'm learning that expansions that have multiple modules are not as much my favorites only because then I have to make decisions and I don't want to have to make decisions. Um, I'll say, I, I don't know if that's unique for me or anybody else, but I'd like having the option of different modules. Like in the, the idea of modules is great, but in practice, I find that they don't tend to work for me as well, depending on the game. I'm sure there are exceptions to this, like probably games that I own currently. Um, but like, I think something, so something like the Spider Springs expansion for Fireball Island is probably a good example of this is going to be something that I don't have to add in, but I probably will every time if it's good, because why not? You know, like, I just, I love the image on the back of the box with the like things flinging out of that little spider trap, whatever. Sorry that it's shiny because it's got the plastic on it still. It just came in the mail yesterday. So avoid the pesky arachnids. Yeah, I, I want to see spiders flying around my Fireball Island. I'm very excited about it. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. People talking about other expansions that they liked. People talking about Detective Club. It looks like 24 ounces. No, 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 no. This is, this is, a, this is a 16 ounce mug, probably. Um, if I had to guess, because yeah, a normal mug is like this big and that's what, like 10 ounces. This is, this is not huge. I know that I love that we've talked about my mug multiple times because it keeps coming back up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, eggnog and coffee. Oh yeah, definitely. Put eggnog in things. Eggnog is awesome. Um, and it's so funny because I think most people hear eggnog and they think alcohol, but like if you buy store-bought eggnog, like from the milk section at the grocery store, it's just, it's not alcoholic. It's just the eggnog part. <clears throat> and that's what's great. So, 
Oh, Kabuki Kid says they did much better in Pandemic Season 1 than Season 2. Um, okay. Uh, James asks, are you interested in Doctor Who Season 12? Heck yes, I am. I am always interested in Doctor Who. Love Doctor Who. Yes. Uh, Kabuki Kid asks, are you interested in the new Ghostbusters? Yes, I am. I'm interested in that too. I'm very excited about the new Ghostbusters. I think people got mad at first because it sounded like, like people thought that this new movie was saying that the reboot didn't exist anymore, but I don't think that's the case. It seems like the there's two different worlds now that exist in Ghostbusters because um, the all-female cast one was amazing. But this new one, which is set in the original universe, it also looks great. And I think they both exist concurrently and I'm fine with that and I love them all. So I'm very curious about the new Ghostbusters. Um, let's see here. Oh, Gordon Liddy says, Merry Christmas. Oh gosh, the cat... The chat just jumped. I lost the message. Hold on, scrolling back up. Uh, just got a chance to play bees with my family and it was fun. The colors and artwork immediately got my teenagers interested. That's awesome. If you can get the teenagers interested, then you know it's a good game. Because um, teenagers, hard to get interested in things sometimes. <laughs> um, let's see. Dutch Yoda says, I played Charterstone only once. Never got the group back together. That was two years ago. Not sure if I'll continue the game ever. I mean, if you're, if you are anything like me, if it's been two years, it's not happening, but who knows? You can always start over with a new group too, at some point, if you really wanted to. Um, let's see here. Oh, Kabuki Kid says they've played Pandemic more since playing Pandemic Legacy. Okay. That's interesting. Hi, Richard. I know you said hi forever ago, but I'm just now getting to that part of the chat. Um, James says, I've only played Classic Pandemic a few times. It's good. Never played Pandemic Legacy. If you like regular Pandemic, you should try Pandemic Legacy. If you've got the group for it, I would say do it. Um, skip res Risk Legacy if you don't like Risk at all. It changes things up and makes the games really short, but if you don't like Risk, I'd skip it. Yeah, that's kind of my... And honestly, there's just too many games coming out at this point, so going back to one like that, eh. Um, let's see. Richard says, I liked Aeon's End Legacy, but his group seemed to lose interest. Okay. Um, Joshua says, struggling with Legacy Grant games right now. You have Gloomhaven, Tainted Grail, Lord of the Rings, The King's Dilemma, and Seafall that we all want to play. Yeah, there's a lot. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't more. I felt like when Legacy games started coming up that there would be a lot more legacy games coming out and I've been I'm glad that there aren't tons and tons but there's still so many King's Dilemma is definitely on my list of things that I want to play I walked by the booth at Gen Con in August that had King's Dilemma multiple times and wanted to buy it but the box was so huge and I didn't think I could fit it in my luggage so that's what kind of stopped me um and Gloomhaven Y'all, if you've been here before and you've heard me talk about Gloomhaven, I backed the, not the original Kickstarter, but the second one, like the, the first reprint that they did. And it was delivered to me in the fall of 2017. And that box still hasn't even been opened. <laughs> well, it's been briefly opened and then closed. Um, I haven't punched it. I haven't sorted it. I've never played it. I know I'm going to like Gloomhaven. I'm pretty sure of it. And I still haven't played that darn game. I have considered playing Gloomhaven solo and even maybe streaming it here on the Dice Tower. Um, I've talked about this over the past couple of years, for sure. Um, I think that would be fun and interesting, but I don't know if people would enjoy that or not. Um, but I do really want to play it at some point, I swear. I know it doesn't seem like I do, but who knows? Um, what time are we at? Oh, we're getting close to time, so I should speed it up a little bit. Um, Talk, Glenn was talking about uh, the pa the problem for him with regular pandemic is that winning or losing feels almost the same. There's not really that feeling of reward when you beat it. Nothing gets read, no story, no continuation. I guess if you get used to games where there is like that story aspect, then yeah, it can feel. But I, I'll admit in regular pandemic, those moments where you think you're going to lose and you pull out a victory just by the skin of your teeth, that's a, that's a pretty good feeling for me. Um, let's see. Like I said, uh, Kabuki Kid says, hard to get expansions to the table for that same reason, teaching new players. Yeah, I think that's where I'm, I'm learning that I don't need to buy all of the expansions for games that I love. Uh, like, even if it's a game I play a lot, 
I don't necessarily need to own the expansions for everything. Um, so uh, Hawk Skull says, similarly, I despise taking expansion content out of the base game, so I often don't even bother putting it in, even when I, uh, when it can free... Oh, when it came free as a Kickstarter stretch goal. Once it's in the box, it stays in the box. I'm the same way, generally. Uh, oh, Netters is here. Hi, Netters. Um, I don't want to make uh, decisions. Isn't this why we play games? To make decisions, the more interesting, the better. <laughs> I Right, but see, I want to make the decisions in the game, not before I play the game. So maybe that's why. I don't know. I'm. It's tough for me. Let's see here. Uh, oh, bye, Ruel. I'm sure you're gone already, but have fun at game day if you haven't left yet. And yeah, I'll see you at Dice Tower West. Ooh, that's a good reminder. Folks, don't leave. Do not leave yet. This is very important. Dice Tower West here in Las Vegas, where I live, is February 26th through March 1st. Five full days of board gaming awesomeness, open gaming extravaganza, and badge sales end on January 6th. So if you haven't got your badges yet, you need to get them now um, because we are going to completely close badge sales on January 6th. Um, it's kind of has to do with like the way our library system works um, and having we need to have the badges created in advance so we can check games out. There's a whole bunch of things. But regardless, get your badges now. If you can't get them before January 6th, there is a chance that you'll be able to get one from somebody who can't use theirs anymore and is willing to transfer it. But I just don't want people to have to count on that. So get your badges now if you don't have them yet, because I want you all to come play games with me here in Las Vegas. And it's going to be awesome. Um, let's see here. I'm skipping past some stuff. Um, let's see here. Oh, I love that you all are just talking about stuff. It's awesome. Netters says, I would be interested in 15-minute legacy games. I don't have the attention span to play a 12-game campaign that lasts more than an hour per play. I've actually thought somebody would do that, like a legacy game for a really, really quick game. Um, like that you could either play through the whole thing in one sitting pretty easily. Um, I'm surprised that hasn't happened, actually. Let's see. Gooseman is playing City of Kings. Hawk School is playing Gloomhaven, has been playing Gloomhaven for over a year. Uh, just cracked into the expansion. Okay, that's pretty cool. Kabuki Kid still hasn't played Gloomhaven either. Me, me neither. So uh, thoughts on Frosthaven. I didn't really look at it that closely, so I don't know a lot about it. Um, let's see here. The best food item I had over the holiday. Um, well, my husband and I made eggplant parmesan for Christmas, and it was really good. So I'm going to say eggplant parmesan. It was delicious. Um, all right. It is a couple minutes past my usual end time, um, so I am going to wrap things up here shortly. Again, uh, Dice Tower tonight is this coming Wednesday, January 1st, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It is going to be me, Eric Summer, and Rob Davio live Rob Davio, special guest, tell everyone, Return to Dark Tower is coming to Dice Tower tonight, and y'all get to see it live on stream, uh, and I'm really excited about it. Before you leave, please make sure you click that thumbs up button below this video. Help me with the YouTube algorithms. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, this is my live q and I do this every month, the last Sunday of the month. Um, and I love hanging out with you all. So I hope you all can join me again in the future. And I hope I see you on our next Dice Tower Tonight stream. Uh, until next time, I'm Crystal Pisano, and you've been watching Board Game Brunch, my live Q&A. Have a great New Year's, everyone.